What's up guys? I'm doing an over voice. I've never done this before, but um, we are going to do like a, a week of eating, not like a full week, not everything I eat, but I'm thinking, that was a paper towel. I am thinking that I'll do a couple of my staple meals and try and make this maybe a weekly or like once or twice a month thing uh, where I show you guys some of the meals I eat because I get a lot of requests. Hi Finny. I do have the baby here with me. The other kids are at school. Um, where I, I get a lot of requests about the food that I make because as you probably know by now, I eat a plant-based diet. And when I'm in the right headspace, I try and eat very healthy and nutritious. So not always, <laughs> but I, I do like fitness and health. And so if you want some kind of like plant vegetable alternatives to the things that you normally eat we're gonna try and uh show some of that so right now i am just patting down a block of tofu some people like to with tofu press it like put something heavy on it and try to ex expel a lot more of the liquid i don't find that necessary also i keep any leftover tofu i don't use in a glass pyrex bowl with cold water they say you should refresh it every day i don't do that but i try and eat it within like four days if i open a container so i don't really press the water out fully because i just don't find that necessary and it's kind of a pain in the butt in my opinion but i like extra firm tofu i'll eat tofu in any form i do really like tofu extra firm is like my go-to for basically everything stir fries crumbles scrambles um, I also make like a think egg salad, I guess, with tofu. But my most common way of eating tofu is baked slash air fried. And I put them in stir fries or I just eat it straight up as my protein in like a, an otherwise basic meal. Like think your standard American meal where you have meat and potatoes and a vegetable. This will be my meat in that kind of meal. So anyway, I like to, when I do a stir fry, which is what I'm doing, make them into little rectangles. And then I just put them in some Tupperware. Plastic, plastic ain't it, but you know, it goes on a budget. So the most basic thing I do for a stir fry with tofu to marinate is regular old soy sauce. Just drizzle it on. You can, but you don't have to. I also like to add a dash of rice vinegar. You can get seasoned rice vinegar, but like I've never used it, so I can't vouch for it. But just literally a dash and then shake it up. Now I don't need to like coat everything. That's my opinion because it will go in the stir fry, which will be flavorful. This is just so that it doesn't bake bland, you know? So I'll let that sit for a few minutes while I prep some vegetables. A lot of times I do soba noodles or I do udon noodles. I'm just gonna do rice today. But this is the soba that I like to use. These are the udon noodles that I like to use. They're very high in sodium though. If you're watching your sodium, I wouldn't use udon noodles because there's gonna be a lot of soy sauce in the rest of this dish and that means there is sodium. So I'm gonna try and cut this angle a little bit and start chopping up some veg. Okay, I changed the angle a little bit. So I use the air fryer. I start the tofu first for anyone who's new to air frying. Um, I try and do about 15 minutes total and then I let it sit for a few minutes because that ends up crisping it even more than just putting extra time in. So there's that. I'm going to go start this and then chop up the veg. I'm also going to get my rice started because that takes about 15-20 minutes to make. I just use plain old white rice. Nothing fancy. I know a lot of like health people will say use whole whole grain rice or what brown rice. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, it doesn't sit well with me. I, uh, I'm not gluten free, but for whatever reason, whenever I eat brown rice, I just don't feel good for the rest of the day. Uh, most of you know I've got stomach issues, IBS, and I don't know. I just, very finicky stomach. 
so I don't fuck around when it comes to my food, if I can help it. So we're gonna get the water in. I would assume if you're Asian, you know this already. If you don't, and you've watched the Joe Koi stand up special on Netflix, you have seen this, but if you stick your finger into rice and it, the water comes up to your knuckle, that means that there's enough water for the rice to cook. Uh, I only do enough for me and whoever else is eating rice wise. I don't like to keep it uh, for leftovers because one, it doesn't heat up well. And two, actually rice is one of the like most susceptible to getting bacteria growth in the fridge. That's just part of its properties and um, I don't risk it. So yeah, now we're gonna get this started. Okay, so when it comes to vegetables, I cut up the ones that I, uh, that need to go on first because obviously vegetables cook at different speeds. So I go first with red onion. I almost always use red onion. I just like it more. Fun fact, I can't have onions raw. That shit wrecks me. <laughs> so cooked onions all the way. It's the same with a lot of vegetables for me, actually. Um, okay, so, really depends on how you, like how you cut it is really up to you. I don't really, I'm not a professional. I don't have zero knife skills. So there you go. Um, so anyway, yes. I switch up the veggies when I can because it gets boring to do the same stuff over and over again. You know what I mean? So I have the rice going. Okay, where was I? I cut the vegetables up that I need to start cooking first. So in this case, it's red onion, celery, carrots. I know it doesn't look like a lot, and that's because this is going to be, I was probably being really loud there. I know this doesn't look like a lot, but that's because it's only gonna be me and Finn eating. The big kids are in school for another three and a half hours. It is noon right now. And it's just me and him. So he is such a good eater. He will eat basically anything I give him. There's a few exceptions to that rule. He does not like zucchini and he does not like tomatoes. I love zucchini, especially in my stir fries, but I'm leaving it out for his sake. Plus I might have zucchini for dinner. I haven't decided what I'm doing for dinner. My husband's got a really weird work schedule. So, Every day is something different. And today he won't be home until the kids are getting ready for bed. So we've got those. I'm just gonna put it in the same bowl that I had the tofu in to set aside, cause it's not time to start the veggies yet. Probably in about two minutes. I'm gonna wash this broccoli real quick. Broccoli is easily, I've got my uh, light behind me. Because this is new, I am experimenting and everything could look completely crappy and I would uh, apologize in advance for that, but we're gonna learn together, right? Broccoli is my favorite vegetable. It's just so versatile. So, so versatile. I love it every way. I like it raw. I like it steamed. I like it baked. I like it roasted. I've never air fried it, so I guess I can't say I like it that way. But it's a flavor sponge. I think it's funny that it's always had that bad rep that kids don't like it. To be honest, when I was younger, I was a vegetarian my almost my entire teen years, and I started eating meat again probably around the time I started dating my husband. He was a big meat eater. He's like a steak and potatoes kind of guy, but he's a vegan now for like two and a half years. And the worst part about being a vegetarian when I was that young is that I didn't really love a lot of veggies, and I was a pretty overweight kid. So I'd eat it with like cheese sauce and stuff. I'm excellent. All right, we're gonna wash some mushrooms. That'll be the last vegetable that goes into the stir fry. Baby fellas are the superior mushroom. They work well for everything. Literally fight me. All right, I have the oil on. Um, I put a little bit of, like probably less than a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon of 100% olive oil to warm up. I'm gonna move the camera now that I've done all the cutting and we're gonna cook. All right, this isn't the best angle, but whatever. I am improvising here. There's the timer for the tofu, so I'm gonna let it sit. So normally I put the broccoli in 
after the onions and the celery have cooked down a little bit, but because I'm trying to navigate both the child and this video, I'm just throwing it all in together. We rent, so this is not my stove of choice. I like real fire as well as this is janky as hell. But you know what happens when you rent. The landlords get to decide what you have. Okay, so these are all the veggies that'll be in there, plus the mushrooms. So while this is starting to saute, also, 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 one of my favorite all-purpose seasonings is, let me see, can I get it on the camera? Garlic salt. Literally, it's good on everything. I just sprinkle a little bit because remember, our sauce is going to be pretty salt heavy. And that is what we're gonna make right now is the sauce. Some people like it thicker and put cornstarch in it. I'm gonna do that for the sake of the video, but it, in my opinion, is unnecessary for this easy stir fry. So, here's the other good thing about me. <laughs> I don't usually use me measurements unless I'm following a recipe. So whatever I put in this, um, will make the sauce and the same thing because I don't like to do dishes. I just do it by, I play by ear. So, veggie broth, first and foremost. I'm just gonna put it right in here. Vegetable broth. I would say it's like a couple tablespoons. There's still some tofu on the side, but that's fine, we'll cook in. A couple tablespoons of that, plus my soy sauce. Again, a little bit less than, oh, I'm not showing you very well, am I? A little bit less than the uh, veggie broth, but probably another two tablespoons of that. So I'd say three for the broth, two for the soy sauce, a dash of vinegar. You can also add ginger. I do that often, especially if I have fresh ginger, which I don't. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of powder in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can show you. The tofu is out. You can see that it's nice and crispy, but if I let it sit for a little bit, just inside the air fryer, but without it closed, it'll crisp up perfectly. Let me get that ginger. I don't have, I do not have it. I don't have ginger right now. I really thought I did, but I guess I don't. So we're not gonna do that. But this is about the time that I put about half of this in, just to get some liquid in there, because the broccoli doesn't cook down very well without the liquid, quite honestly. And in about a minute, I will add the mushrooms. Doing good things, all good things here. Tiniest, tiniest bit of cornstarch, just to thicken it, a thicker sauce. So like that much cornstarch into the remaining liquid here. Made it a little bit murkier, which is what I want. We're gonna get the mushrooms to put the mushrooms in. I know a lot of people don't like mushrooms and like obviously everybody's got their taste when it comes to veggies. So really do what it is that you like. Just know that cooking times are different and I think at this point you probably are aware of how long each vegetable should cook. But if not, just do your best. Google it, maybe, or test and see, trial and error. All right, I'm gonna let it cook a little bit down before we add that sauce. And in the meantime, I'm gonna clean up a little bit, so. Okay, so the rice just finished. I'm gonna move it off and add the tofu, because the tofu is now done and crispy. There we go, right into the bowl of ghost. So, the veg is nicely cooked down, and I'm gonna add the rest of this sauce. I'm gonna stir it real quick again, because sometimes the, um, whatever it's called, cornstarch separates. You can also use arrowroot. I've never used that before. Some of the uh, vegan recipe, like, that I s started out using, like minimalistbaker.com is one place to go if you're looking for plant-based recipes. She's not fully vegan, so not all of her recipes are, but she does do a lot of different dietary things for people, like gluten-free and vegan, etc., which is nice. So, I'm gonna let it cook a little bit while I prep some bowls. 
for my son and I. I like to get his prepped first so that it has time to cool off, but he'll eat all of this. Also, if you like hot sauce at all, I'm a big sriracha fan. All right, I'm gonna test one of these pieces here. Hot pocket. That is pretty dang good. But I like stuff hot. Actually, my son does as well, but I don't like to subject him to super hot, like sriracha. Sauce is pretty much thickened. There's a little bit of juiciness left over, but what can you do? Let's see if I can move some of this fruit here. We're a chaotic mess in this house. We got five people living in 1,100 square feet. Found to be that way. Okay, so make sure everything's off. I have a habit of not making sure everything is off. And it's funny, his favorite thing to eat is cooked celery, which my husband hates. So he's definitely my kid. When it comes to vegetables, I definitely don't feel bad about eating a lot because it's freaking vegetables, you know? He's about to crawl up on the TV. So I'd say that we're right at the perfect time to be done with all this. Do the final clothes off. So that's it. I'll do the dishes later. I'm gonna pick this up and just show you right here. We got the nice little uh, shadow. I will get better at this if, the, if I continue to do this, but there's my lunch. I'll throw some sriracha on it. We'll be good. All right, there's the first meal I've ever cooked and shared with you guys uh, from start to finish. We got a stir fry with tofu, veggies, rice, and sriracha. Sometimes I'll put um, sesame seeds on top, but I just don't feel like it today. So that is that. It is quite a large lunch, but also for breakfast, I only had a protein shake, so I am pretty hungry as it is noon. It's 12.30 actually. After we eat this, I might go on a walk with the kid, but um, it looks like it's gonna rain, so I don't know, we'll see. That's it, uh, I'll check in with the next meal, I guess, whenever I feel like uh, filming again. <laughs> see you soon. All right, I don't have my uh, light or my tripod for my phone and I'm in awful, awful lighting, but I've only video recorded that one meal so far and I wanted to get three up by the end of next week. So by the time you're hearing this, like, I don't know what the date will be, the 20th possibly? So I'm just gonna hold my phone and show you a real quick, simple meal, things I need, like I like to make when, um, it's lunchtime and I'm alone with the kids or a kid and I don't have a lot of time to like prep a ton of vegetables. So uh, chickpeas, I don't take the skins off unless I'm doing like a chickpea tuna, which I'm not doing right now. So I don't mind the skins on right now, but yeah, just your standard chickpeas. So the next scene you'll see is uh, what I do to mash them. I should probably explain too that I'm making a chickpea uh, like buffalo type style wrap. So um, I do use a tiny bit of butter. You can use more if you like the more buttery taste, but because I'm trying to like eat smart, I'm not doing that. Country Crock plant butter is brand new and I do really like it. I also like if you can get your hands on, I can't believe it's not butter vegan. And last but not least, Earth Balance, their vegan option. It's not as spreadable as the first two that I mentioned though. So this is definitely um, my second favorite. I can't believe it's not butter vegan is my favorite. Yeah, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this in the pan and then mash my chickpeas into that. So as you can see, tiny, tiny little pad of butter. That's maybe half a teaspoon plus the chickpeas, which aren't a whole lot, but I'm the only one that eats this because my baby who typically eats everything doesn't like chickpeas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash these all and I need both my hands to do it. So just know that that's what I do. That's all I do is I just mash it with a fork while the uh, pan is not super hot yet. Okay, so we're mostly mashed. And now the secret ingredient, it's not secret, definitely not secret. Frank's Red Hot, just the original. Depending on how much spice you like, it'll change how much you put in. I love spicy food, as you can tell. The other reason I really wanted to showcase a chickpea recipe is because I don't want everyone to think that all I eat is tofu. It seems to look like that sometimes, but anyway, I'm gonna mix this all up and let it cook up a little bit. It really doesn't take long, couple minutes tops. All right, while that's cooking, I do like to start assembling my burrito, sorry about the shadow. 
Um, this is a flour tortilla, a tortilla in uh, burrito size. My husband prefers flour. I would like whole wheat, but I don't like to buy both because then they don't get used. Sorry about the fish, that's gross. Okay, uh, pretty simple. Flour tortilla and some kind of lettuce. Right now we have butter lettuce, basically whatever you like, romaine, iceberg, whatever, tickles your fancy. I tend to have a very hard time digesting romaine. So put a whole bunch of that on there and then next will be the chickpeas. Okay, so there's a chickpea mash on top. If you did not put a lot of franks on it at this point while you were cooking, you could put more on right now. You can also do some ranch. I sometimes do ranch, but um, right now I have none and I've made none. So I'm just going with some very, very basic. How do I get this in the shot? There we go. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Just a tiny little drizzle for a little extra flavor. One of my favorite things on top of a uh, Frank's hot chickpea mash is a little bit of sweet barbecue sauce. Roll it up in a wrap and eat it. I just went on like a mile and a half walk with both kids, younger kids in a stroller, so I am starving and ready to eat this. Okay, so I didn't film how to make this, but I figured because I gave you a hot chickpea recipe, like hot as in spicy yesterday and also warm, here's a cold version using the extra half of the can. This is my like chickpea tuna salad. You just use, rinse off some chickpeas, put it in like a food processor. I like to dice up celery. You can also do red onion, but raw red onion makes my stomach hurt, so I don't do that. I put a dill pickle in there as well and blend it up. You can keep it choppy or you can make it smooth. I made it smooth today. It really just depends on a bed of lettuce, on a piece of toast. You can make a whole sandwich, whatever you want to do, but I also put in garlic salt and a little bit of lemon. And in this one, I did just like probably a tablespoon of vegan mayonnaise, but you can also use avocado if you have avocado. They're just not in season and they're expensive right now. <laughs> and um, I did a little uh, brown mustard, but you can use regular mustard or whatever. You don't even have to use the mustard. It doesn't change it that much. And that's it. You can really just play around. There's a lot of options for what you can put in the mix. Some people use sunflower seeds to give it a little more protein, but this is my lunch. So that is a second way to use chickpeas other than what I showed you yesterday. And I'm going to go eat it and then go on a walk. All right, bye. And here's another super easy meal if you don't mind eating fake meat, which I try to not eat too much of. One, it's expensive. Two, too much of it doesn't make me feel good, but if you don't mind having it once in a while, these are the Gardein Beefless Beef Tips. What I do is just on some rice, um, cooked the normal way I cook it, I think I've shown you before. Then I cut up a whole red pepper and usually a quarter of a red onion, but I am out of red onions, tomorrow's grocery day. And saute that in a little garlic salt with a tiny bit of olive oil. Throw in the beefless beef tips as well. And at the very end, splash in probably about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half of soy sauce, just to give it a little bit of pep and sauce. And boom, that's it. It's super simple. And uh, as I said, I like to do really simple lunches because it is just me and the baby and he gets into shit and um, I have to eat quickly. So that's what I got for you. All right, super exciting. Cool. Bye. What's up, guys? It is 8.30 on a Mon- No, what day is it? Today's Tuesday. Hmm. Hmm. In any case, <laughs> it's grocery day, which means I have a ton of produce that needs to be used. So here I am, chopping up some cauliflower. Um, this is the end of my grocery week. So all my produce is, like, on the verge of going bad. Normally, for breakfast, I would say four to five times a week. I have a protein shake, maybe some fruit if I'm hungry, but mostly I have a protein shake that is pea protein powder and uh, almond milk. Sometimes I will put in, we shouldn't have this on while I'm talking, sometimes I'll put in hemp seeds for the omega 3s and 6s, um, but I oftentimes don't do that just because I don't like the grittiness that happens. Um, but today, because of all the produce, I want to get a very produce heavy breakfast in. So, sorry for the shadows and all that stuff. You're just gonna have to deal with the yellow lighting because this is what we're working with. Um, starting with cauliflower, what I am making is a like 
Spanish style breakfast wrap with cauliflower and mushroom and chickpeas. And I'm gonna put it in like this large burrito wrap you've seen in the previous uh, clips. And I'll show, you, <laughs> I'll show you how I do it. Um, I'm gonna wash this up and get going. All right, so got some of the cauliflower chopped up, adding a little bit of olive oil. Take it around. The main spice that I use in these is just chili powder. I like to put a lot in. Actually, just gonna take this cap off. Shaking it is a pain. All right, there's that. I will also add a dash of ground cumin. Cumin, however you wanna say it. Just a dash. I love smoked paprika. I put it on, can you see it? Smoked, smoked paprika. My son's in here playing with my blender. Bottom, nothing dangerous. Because I don't have onions right now, because the groceries are coming, I'm gonna put a tiny dash of onion powder. Ooh, that was a lot more than I meant to, whatever. And my favorite, my tried and true, garlic salt. I put garlic salt on everything. I think this series is gonna be very hard to edit. I don't know how uh, vegan YouTubers do it, or just food YouTubers. Sometimes I'll use adobo with um, turmeric, because turmeric's good for you, but I think I'm gonna put this on the mushrooms maybe, so we'll see. But that's it. I'm going to get these in the oven, which is at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for anybody that's not from the United States. And I just put it on parchment paper. All right, so there it is on the parchment paper. I have excess parchment paper because I'm going to put the sliced mushrooms and chickpeas on that in about 10 minutes. So these will go for 10 minutes. Once I get the other stuff on, it'll be 20 minutes. I kind of like these breakfasts if I'm going to make it because you basically get it done and then you sit for 20 minutes and wait. <laughs> Okay, so same, same sitch. Got a little bit of olive oil. I put it in the same container because as you've heard in the past, I don't like to do a whole lot of dishes if I can avoid it. Waste of energy and time and electricity for washing and water. Same spices, garlic, salt, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of smoked paprika. Tiny dash of onion this time for real dash. There we go, perfect. And the chili powder, there's that. This will go on in four minutes. I'm going to, these are the chickpeas left over from meals from the other day. Just gonna rinse them and do the same exact seasoning. So, plus the adobo sauce. So I won't even show you, but about to drain them and do that. And the next clip will be when they come out of the oven, probably. All right, I'll see you then. My laundry machine is draining. The timing is wonderful. In any case, this is the finished result. I am going to uh, put it all together and then I'll film a clip of the final product. All right, here is the final product. We got a bunch of stuff. I'm not probably not even gonna be able to close this, but we got the rest of the lettuce because it's about to go bad in the bottom. We got our cauliflower, our mushrooms, our chickpeas, and then my tried and true Cholula hot sauce, one of my favorites on anything that's got like a Spanish Mexican flavor. Sometimes I'll put Chipotle ranch on this as well. Um, the dairy free kind by Just, but they've kind of really sucked lately with their products and they've been unavailable since like, I don't know, February. So. I don't know what's happening with that company, but I haven't been able to do that in a long time, but it was my favorite topping on something like this. So now we're just going with hot sauce. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this and then get some reading done because my baby just went down for his first nap of the day. And uh, that'll be the last recipe for this video. Let me know if there's anything you want to see showcased or if there's like, I don't know. Is there anything specific you want to see in these videos. I don't know how many of you are actually going to be interested in this, but it's something I'm trying out to do more than just bookish content because uh, a few people were interested. So let me know what you think down below. Let me know what I can do to better this or to help you if you're trying to go more plant-based and you want to see what you can do instead of something or 
you want to try ways to use tofu or, you know, some, not just tofu, anything. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I will see you in the next one, guys. Like, subscribe, you know how it is. I'll see you, oh, I just touched it. When I see you, bye.